in the SDGs. I'm so uh, it's I'm happy to see you all here today. And uh, first, uh, our Deputy Secretary General of Finnish National Commission on Sustainable Development, Maria Innanen, will will give an introduction. Then we will give floor to Erka Leininen, who tells more about Finnish education sector. After that, uh, Senia Forsman from S Group tells about their sustainability work. And then we get to hear from Lena Kaisa Piakkari from Ministry of Environment uh, about uh, green deals. And then we will give floor to Ville Tajama from the city of Espo and hear about the city's work for sustainability. You can ask questions and request to present questions and uh, by raising your hand or writing them on chat box. We have a time for one question after each presentation. And then at the end, we have more time for discussion and questions. And at the end, Maria Innanen will say a few words about the role of citizens and concluding remarks. Thank you all for being here. And now, Maria, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Viola. Um, it's, uh, it's really a great honor to me open this our our uh, session during this catalyst week and it's uh, it's fantastic to see that there's so many participants all over the world in this session you're most welcome um first i would like to thank the global catalyst community and the, this catalyst week that we can really be uh, part of this week and uh, we had this opportunity to share really our practical uh, um, uh, tool and especially discuss with you with you all and also learn from you and your experience and also i want to thank once more the catalyst 2030 organization for the catalyst award uh, that was presented to the finnish national commission on sustainable De development well uh, finland has uh, almost 30 years uh, created common understanding in our society learn from the each others and build trust and participatory me mechanisms. And uh, our multi-stakeholder National Commission on Sustainable Development has been the main platform for enhancing systemic social change towards uh, SDGs and sustainable development. In commission, there are representatives from all over the society, cities, business academia, ministries, etc. And Prime Minister is leading uh, the commission. And this commission invented the society's commitment tool that we will now present you. It's one of the key instruments for engaging the whole of society in implementing the SDGs in Finland. Um, uh, they wanted to develop this tool to accelerate the work, to make concrete actions and to get everyone on board. And at the same time, uh, it's also a national sustainable development strategy and frame uh, and, and, as I said, a practical tool to everybody to particip participate. Um, the Commission ended up eight national goals. Um, Viola, uh, I, I can't see the change in the slides, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so, the, yeah. So the Commission ended up eight national goals, which, uh, which, which needed to be solved in order to get sustainable development happen in Finland and elsewhere. And the main objective is in our strategy to ensure the well-being of people and the environment at the, and at the same time provide new possibilities for growth of the economy. And the tool is very easy. All organizations can pick one goal or more they want to promote. Uh, the goal is, which is relevant to them. And then all organization deten determines concrete actions, operational commitments. They, they do operational commitments that include concrete measures, changes in operations. They can start a pilot project or get some innovative partnerships or whatever. And then organization writes the commitment into our public database, sets 
indicators and starts the work. And all these operational commitments, they need to create something new. They need to be measurable and followable. And, and, and so at the moment we have, a, there's a, um, a figures, we have over 2,500 2, commitments uh, from all over the society, over 500 commitments from uh, companies. There's uh, many, many cities, schools, uh, uh, ministries, and other, other organizations which have, have done these commitments. And this was my intro, and now we, uh, here, we will hear in practice how this commitment works. Thank you, Viola. Now you can take the lead. Thank you. Thank you, Maria Innanen. And now, Erkka Laininen, please, the floor is yours. So, thank you. Can you see my slides now? Are yes. they visible? Good. So, dear, dear audience, uh, thank you for this opportunity to share with you some examples of the Finnish education sectors inputs for transforming society towards a sustainable future. My name is Erkka Laininen and I'm working for the OCA Foundation for Teaching Education and Personal Development, which is a foundation established by the Finnish Trade Unions of Education. My work in the foundation is to develop solutions for sustainability education and our foundation also maintains the National Sustainable Development Certification System for educational organizations. And I'm also an associate member of the Finnish Commission on Sustainable Development. The Finnish education sector has taken the challenge of sustainable development seriously. We have a long tradition of integrating sustainable development in the learning contents of the national core curricula for schools. Currently, constructing of a sustainable future is one of the so-called transversal competencies, which is a subject crossing skill to learn. It aims at strengthening active citizenship, futures thinking and building a sustainable lifestyle. The recent core curriculum also brought a concept of eco-social education into the value basis of the curriculum. In vocational education field, sustainability skills are integrated in the competence requirements of vocational qualifications. And many vocational institutions have developed together with working life so-called competence pledges for sustainability skills that they will provide for their students. During the past years, several institutions have also set creation of a sustainable future as their core strategic target. Finnish universities introduced for some time ago their sustainability targets. Universities aim at carbon neutrality by year 2030 which is a target also required by the Ministry of Education. In addition, universities will integrate sustainable development in all their teaching programs. And in the field of research and development, universities have promised to aim at finding solutions for sustainability challenges. And the uh, fourth sector, liberal adult education is an influential part of norm formal learning reaching annually over 10 percent of the Finnish population. Targets of liberal adult education which are set in legislation are among others promoting citizenship, cultural diversity, internationality and sustainable development. As liberal adult education is not directed by national curricula this sector of education is great for experimental learning. The Finnish educational organizations use several tools and certificates to evaluate and develop sustainability in their operation. Two specific certification system, systems tailored for educational institution are used in Finland. Ecoschools, which is an international system, 
and sustainable development certification, which is a national system. Thus far, sustainable development has not been integrated in the core of the Finnish university teacher study programs. Students can learn basic knowledge and pedagogical skills on sustainability education on voluntary courses. In-service training is also organized around these teams, but it covers only a small part of the Finnish teachers. Despite the fact that Finnish educational institutions have done a lot for sustainability, integration of Agenda 2030 in their operation has been a quite slow process. Currently, it seems that more and more schools and universities have taken Agenda 2030 as part of their strategies and teaching. And around 2000, uh, two, 200 educational institutions have made their own society's commitment. Uh, UNESCO has recently highlighted the importance of learning that transforms our relationship with the world. I cured UNESCO background paper for the Futures of Education initiative. Education needs to play a pivotal role in radically reconfiguring our place and agency within this interdependent world. This requires a complete paradigm shift from learning about the world in order to act upon it to learning to become with the world around us. Our future survival depends on our capacity to make this shift. Finland has taken first steps towards this kind of learning by introducing eco-social education in the core curricula for comprehensive and upper secondary schools. Eco-social education has also been adopted in the field of liberal adult education. In the core of eco-social education is the new value hierarchy, which sets the ecological sustainability as the first priority for human actions. The second priority is development, which recognizes the intrinsic value of each human being. In the third place comes economy, which is not anymore an end itself, but a tool enable equal human development within the limits of one planet. Ecosocial education is built on a systemic understanding of the world, seeing it as a whole in which we human beings are part of societal systems and part of the biosphere around us. It is built on a value base of responsibility, sufficiency and interpersonality. Responsibility emphasizes extending the human's moral concern over all humankind and the non-human world including plants, animals, and abiotic nature. Sufficiency is about finding answers to the questions such as how much material wealth is enough. Interpersonality directs our attention towards non-material things which can provide long-lasting meaningfulness for our lives and thus reduce the need for consumption. If we look at the 17 SDGs through the glasses of eco-social education, we can see them as a wedding cake-like structure where targets related to the biosphere form the foundation for all other targets, including societal targets in the middle and economy on the top. This means that the SDGs are not all equal, but hierarchical. Without a sustainable biosphere, there cannot be humans and societies and no human-made systems, such as economy. To promote this kind of learning, which transforms our relationship to the world and thus brings about change in society, the Oka Foundation has developed indicators for a sustainable future. The indicators are part of the Sustainable Development Certification for Educational Establishments. Using these indicators, an educational organization can evaluate how its operation reflects a reproductive, proactive and transformative orientation. A transformative educational organization sees itself as a network part of society. It seeks partnerships for creating societal, social and technological innovations which improve sustainability. Managers of the organization enable interaction and self-organization and celebrate diversity as a valuable richness. 
this creates, creates suitable circumstances for emergent organizational change. A transformative organization is open to the future, not only by using scenarios of the future development, but also dreaming about the futures its members truly want. Learning is seen as a collective quality which can create new ways of action, new meanings for things, and catalyst cultural transformation of society. Thank you. Thank you, Erka. This was really interesting to hear. Um, if you have any questions, please write them on the chat. I might not be able to see if someone has raised their hand. Um, but if not at this time, please, uh, Senja Forsman, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, you can see me and hear me now, right? Excellent. That I can see my face in there. Uh, Viola, could you share the slides? Still? And excellent. Good morning, everybody. Uh, great to be here. And thank you to the organizer for, for letting me to have this presentation. My name is Senja Forsman and I work as a sustainability manager in S Group. And for the next 10 minutes, I will tell shortly about S Group sustainable work and the commitments for the sustainable development. And sorry, I will close my camera in order to save the connection. I have had some problems, but I, I, I hope this is okay for you guys. Next slide, please. Uh, firstly, something about S Group. Uh, briefly, S Group is a Finnish network of companies operating in, in the retail and service sectors. Uh, we have about 2,000 outlets in Finland, as well as operations in Russia and Estonia, mainly supermarkets and hotels there. S Group comprises 19 cooperatives in Finland, and then we also have SOK Corporation along with its subs subsidiaries, such as INEX, uh, the warehouse and the logistics center. And our mission, which was updated a year ago, is together we build a better place to live, on which we also uh, put our sustainability work or the sustainability work is built on. Next slide, please. As you can see, S Group has a wide service range, which is also a huge resource for us in terms of sustainability. Uh, this allows uh, for a diverse field where we can bring solutions to different consumer needs and also take into account the different sustainability targets and actions. Some have said that S Group contains almost everything from the cradle to grave. It's not really like that, but we have a huge amount of different services. Uh, there is a supermarket trade, department stores, S Bank, as well as service station stores and fuel sales, travel industry and the hardware stores. And these all are owned by our 2.5 million loyalty card holders. In Finland, if you have the green card, the S bonus card, then you kind of own a piece of S group and you kind of work with us in the sustainability uh, teams. Next slide, please, Viola. Uh, okay, then a little bit our sustainability work. Uh, our sustainability work is built on the specific UN sustainable development goals. In addition, our work is influenced by the guiding principles on business and human rights. So you, uh, you can see those, those frameworks on the left side of these slides. These two entities form the basis of the framework of our responsibility work, together with the Finland's Commissions for Sustainable Development. In addition, the expectations of various stakeholders, as well as the global megatrends affects in the background. And through these, uh, we have built our own sustainability program and set the goals for the next decades. Next slide, please. So um, our sustainability program uh, is called Together We Will Make a Better Place to Live. And it looks very far into the future until 2030. Uh, 
Uh, it includes three main themes, which contains a number of short and long term goals and actions. Firstly, uh, towards a new normal in sustainable consumptions, a consumption together one step at a time. Uh, this pays a particular attention to consumer side. We strive to find solutions on how we can, at the consumer interface, promote sustainable consumption. For example, uh, we encourage our customers to make healthy and responsible choices. Uh, in 2030, the aim is that at least 65% of the food we sell will be plant-based and 80% will be produced in Finland. Together, these two goals form a very strong signal and ambition setting, and hopefully also drive new domestic innovations. At the same time, uh, we want to promote uh, Finns in carbon neutral mobility. Secondly, uh, the aim is towards sustainable growth by respecting nature. Uh, this contains targets and actions mainly affecting our own operations. It includes, for example, our ambitious climate target. We want to be carbon negative uh, by 2025. And to, uh, to achieve this, we will invest, for example, renewable energy, as well as improve the energy efficiency of our, so our own stores and restaurants. And in the end, by doing this one, we will cut our emissions by 90 percent by 2030. We also want to promote circular economy by improving the material recycling of our own operations. But at the same time, we are also looking for new solutions which we can use uh, in our own operations in order to promote circular economy. This could include, for example, different kind of services for our our customers, but also contains uh, uh, targets and actions, for example, on food, food safe, um, lost. And then, <clears throat> then uh, there is the biodiversity, biodiversity and the related targets for that one, which is also going to be a priority in the coming years in our sustainability works. Thirdly, we want to work towards an equal world by removing inequality. This uh, box uh, includes, for example, human rights. We want to promote the human rights in our chain, everywhere in the chain. We want to increase the transparency and strength, the strengthening an inclusive society. And Bottom of these are, are the values of the S group, which you can see below. We exist for the customer. We constantly renew our operations. We want to take the responsibility for people and the environment. And of course, we need to operate profitable. Next slide, please. Um, as said, uh, our sustainability program includes a number of short and long term goals, uh, which takes into account our business units, the different business units and the drivers behind. Uh, here I have added a few examples of the objective and the progress which we are having uh, with them, which are also linked to S groups, uh, the National Social Commitment to Sustainable Development. Our climate target is uh, carbon neg negativity by 2025. And this includes also ambitious targets to reduce emissions 90% by the end of 2030. Of course, behind, behind this, there is a huge amount of different actions. One is, for example, that we want to heavily invest to our own um, own renewable electricity. And for example, last year, we were the largest producer of solar power in Finland. Um, S groups uh, climate goals are in the line with the SBPs, a science-based targets criteria for 1.5 warming scenario and approved by the SBTs. We are also aiming to halve the amount of food waste by the end of 2030. 
Work to reduce food waste has been at the heart of our sustainability work for a very long time. And through the systematic work and operational development, such as uh, optimizing forecasting and ordering, we have already uh, reduced our food waste by 21% over the past six years. Um, perhaps the most visible act uh, for consumer in this manner has been so-called the red discount sticker products, which are used for almost expired foods. Uh, food that is nearly unsellable goes on sale at supermarkets with the price that are already reduced by 30% uh, slash to 60% off at the evening time. We are also promoting healthier food under our nutrition commitments. We seek to encourage bins to eat more vegetables by lowering the prices of finished vegetables, for example. Sales of vegetables in our grocery stores are growing very rapidly. And in 2020, the volume of vegetables sales was 5.3% higher than in the previous year. In addition, we have uh, reduced the salt, sugar and fat content of our private label products as a part of the commitment here. Next uh, slide, please. Um, I think the national uh, social commitment and the SDG, SDGs is, is, uh, to sustain, is an important tool in, in promoting our sustainability work. For example, since 2014, we have done total, I think, eight uh, social commitments to sustainable development. And these uh, commitments include targets, for example, energy efficiency, renewable energy, material efficiency, food waste, better nutrition. And then we are part of the Green Deal on plastic bags. As we see, the social commitment to sustainable development creates a good framework for the companies in their own sustainability work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is there any questions here? for Senia, uh, not yet, uh, and then please, Lena Kaisa Piekkari from Ministry of Environment, and the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, I'll just put my slides from here. I hope you can see them well now. Yes. Thank you. Uh, very happy to be here. Um, my name is Lena Kaisa Piekari and I'm from the Ministry of Environment. And I want to tell you a bit more about um, a one tool that we have uh, for, for together with companies and cities to work towards a, a more sustainable future. And, and this tool is called Green Deals, which are voluntary agreements between the government and sector interest groups and municipalities. Uh, and through Green Deals, uh, we aim to find solutions to address a wide range of environmental challenges and also gain significant, preferably sector-wide positive impacts on the environment. Uh, in these deals, we bring together all the relevant parties that have a key role in making the needed change happen. So the deals are prepared in very close uh, cooperation between government, usually the Ministry of Environment, but also other ministries. And then on the other side, the business sector, industry sector, uh, municipalities. And through the deals, we commit voluntarily to common ambitious targets and also agree on, on which actions will be taken to support the development to, towards these set targets. Um, Green deals often complement or enhance the implementation of exist, existing legislation, 
but also take the targets on a next level as, as it is all voluntary. And uh, through proactive measures and common targets, sometimes it can also help us to avoid some new legislation that would maybe be a heavier way to get to the set targets. Uh, so far, Finland has eight green deals and also several under preparation. Uh, this, this is a relatively new um, steering mechanism. The first one was piloted in 2016. Uh, and uh, throughout the last few years, we have been even more and more trying to take it um, on a next level so that we have our own criteria, our own process and everything for, for preparing the deals. Um, companies and municipalities, then after we have signed a deal, companies and municipalities make their own commitments to support the targets and also um, to set their own measures for, for the development towards the targets. And these measures are reported annually and, uh, and also in general, we are monitoring regularly how the impacts uh, of the agreements are going. Uh, so far, we have over 80 organizations who have made their own, own commitments to these eight different green deals. Um, I'm just going to give you a few examples of um, what kind of topics uh, our green deals are covering. And just to show that also these uh, topics are very versatile and we have very different kinds of uh, approaches to different uh, different existing problems. Um, Lena, one good example, yes. Sorry, uh, we can't uh, see your slides uh, changing. Aha. Uh -huh. Just a second. Yes, for me, I think it you have shows... the same problem. Yes, now. Okay, maybe I'll show it in this term. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you for telling. Yeah. So um, uh, one of our deals is uh, that we made between the the government and the automotive sector, and this climate agreement has a target of reducing the carbon dioxide emissions of first registered passenger cars. Uh, then another good example of, of uh, one way that we are trying to make a change is that we took this approach to, at the same time, through two different deals, that we are trying to affect the demand side and the supply side. And we made with the Finnish technical traders a deal so that uh, they would bring to market more electric machinery, lifting device, counterbalance trucks, and so on. And then on the other side, we made a deal with the uh, biggest cities in Finland and also other organizations that uh, they will put very ambitious goals and targets for getting their construction sites carbon neutral and fossil free. And through public procurement, they will be asking for these uh, new, more electric uh, machinery. Uh, we also have, have a deal where, where we are trying to make a difference in, in the a kindergarten, kindergarten environment and try to decrease the amount of hazardous chemicals in, in the kindergartens. And this is also done through public procurement. And then our newest deal is uh, an, an example of a very ambitious, um, ambitious deal, which is trying to make a difference in the plastics in construction and in the whole value chain. So as part of the deal, we have the construction sites, which are collecting separately plastics then on the other hand, we have the waste management sector, which is preparing these collected plastics to recycling. Uh, then the plastic uh, industry of Finland uh, has a target of using 40% of uh, recycled plastics in its production. And then in the end, as these new products are going on to the construction, um, construction uh, value chain, uh, the users of these products are also um, aiming to use more of, uh, of plastics made of recycled materials. And this way we can really make a difference as we have the whole value chain uh, as part of our deal and behind the same targets. 
Um, then I'll just quickly tell you about our first deal, which was pilot, the pilot deal in 2016. And this deal was between uh, our ministry and the Finnish Commerce Federation and its so-called plastic carrier agreement. And behind this was the, the directive on packaging and packaging waste, uh, which uh, indicates that everybody, all the EU countries have to reduce the amount of consumed plastic carrier bags. In Finland, we wanted to try that, can this be done through voluntary measures so that we won't put it into legislation, but we will do it through, through this Green Deal mechanism. And on, on the Green Deal, we uh, agreed on the measures that the retail sector will make so that uh, we can get to the set targets. And the set target is this 40 bags per person per year, which comes from the packaging directive. And this way also we wanted to examine whether the industry's own innovative operations could maybe be, uh, produce better solutions than what could be ach achieved through governmental guidance. And so far we have 31 companies, over 3,600 shops around Finland who have met their commitment to this plastic carrier agreement. And we are already now seeing that the use of plastic carrier bags uh, versus the revenue growth that we have been able to make a decoupling uh, decoupling between these two. And uh, there is happening as planned a decrease in the consumption of plastic carrier bags. Uh, hopefully in the upcoming years, we will have much more results from, from our different deals and, and hopefully also to be able to share them internationally and, and give our, our tips of what has been working and, and what are the challenges in this kind of voluntary agreeing. But thank you, very, very happy to be here and also happy to answer if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, let's see, not yet uh, questions for you. Then um, we have Ville Tajama from the city of Espo. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Viola. Hello to everyone. Uh, let's, I'll start sharing the screen. Let's see how it goes. Oh, might take a second or two. In case the presentation is not there or, or you can't hear me, please say something. But if not, let's let's start. So uh, first, I have to say that I truly appreciate the theme, connect, celebrate and accelerate, especially the two latter ones. Uh, I think it's important to uh, also celebrate the uh, good things happening. Uh, stop for a while and, and, and breathe and then then start uh, working on the agenda again. Uh, and of course, I, I truly believe that we, we can accelerate uh, the development. Um, perhaps a concrete example of, could be, for instance, that although we are still suffering from the pandemic, uh, some countries uh, more than others, in less, less than a year, we've been able to produce a, a, a totally new vaccine. For, for other diseases, it took uh, 20 years, for example. So, so there's, there is progress and acceleration. Uh, my, my talk is uh, briefly about uh, cities' perspective towards sustainable uh, development, perhaps to, to uh, even more precisely to SDGs, and of course, then the commitment 2050, especially. Uh, I won't be talking about city of Espoo, actually, almost at, at all. I mean, in general terms, it's it's the second largest city in Finland and, and uh, in the southern part. And I'm sure there's a lot of information about the city of Espoo, uh, generic information for those interested. Uh, one thing I will mention is is that that we are uh, seriously committed to sustainable development. Uh, many cities have uh, excellent slogans. Some are the most functional cities in the world. Some aim to be capitals of the Baltic, for instance. Uh, and for Espo, it's to be the most sustainable city in Europe. 
uh, we have been that actually for uh, more than more than once. Uh, I think 2017, 2018. Um, but it's more it's it's more a mindset uh, and a concrete uh, will uh, to act. Um, <laughs> Or, uh, everything I have to say is basically on this one slide. Uh, and, and I will start uh, with this commitment 2050. That was, uh, I think, as Maria mentioned, it's, it's a tangible, practical, concrete way to engage your community, to engage your, your citizens, uh, your organization, your partners to the sustainable development work uh, for us. And I mean, if we look at the timeline, it was already then 2016 uh, in ESPO, for instance, uh, the SDGs uh, were not yet a, a kind of an official uh, agenda, uh, but with the commitment 2050, we were able to start uh, the collaboration uh, with our citizens, also with the government uh, and other cities uh, immediately. Uh, and uh, it's not there in, on the slide, the commitment work is ongoing. Is 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 now it, it kind of looks like it's 2016 to 2019. This is not the case. It's it's an ongoing process. Uh, the three boxes actually mean uh, what is the key focus where we are inserting the most kind of new development uh, energy on, on on which time scale. So the commitment 2050 was kind of it ignited and engaged us uh, into practical. Uh, agenda 2030 work already then back in 2016, 2017. So this was uh, of paramount importance. Uh, and and I, there's few uh, facts uh, that, that were researched already several years ago. Already back then, we had half of our citizens uh, affected by the commitment 2050. Uh, the institution who did the research found that 94% had lasting impact and 96% and uh, found change in behavior. So, so I think really impressed. It, it tells about something about the commitment tool. Just then briefly, uh, I hope this is an example to, to one case example to, to some uh, other local governments or cities, uh, for instance. By the way, I have to say this anecdote uh, personally. I like to talk about cities, not local governments, because you know, cities are local, they're regional, they are national and international actors. So, so uh, let's make this our joint effort to to turn the local government work to, uh, to something else. Well, anyway, so once again, what I want to emphasize uh, with our voluntary local review process, which it's kind of, it's a protocol. Uh, there's a, there's a national review process. Finland has done that twice. Espo and several other cities in Finland uh, have done this uh, city level uh, voluntary review. And and once again, um, especially now that Maria is here listening, uh, I it's wonderful to say out loud that the uh, collaboration with the government has been. Uh, fruitful it has been uh, there has been no boundaries and it's been fun as well and and productive so so it's th this is something perhaps for for uh, go governmental uh, officers and, and officials to to take that that from the case finland that that uh, i think it's been uh, dialogue based uh, uh, kind of co-creative but the voluntary local review was was a really important uh, document a process for us because it uh, uh, I don't think we discussed it, it was not a kind of a way uh, um, how to say conscious decision to do it uh, in a participatory and strategy driven way we knew that this was just the first step on a long, long journey but but to understand better our city we actually met I had the pleasure of meeting 927 uh, people face to face uh, in six months before the pandemic struck. Uh, uh, and the commitment from the city leadership uh, was was truly, uh, well, it was impressive. So so the voluntary local review was a good good starting point for us, for our SDG work. Now we are in a phase where, of course, new political decision makers are being elected in just a few, few months. Uh, there will be a new strategy. We call it the ESPO story. We will embed uh, 
the agenda uh, into the very core of, of our strategy. And, and that strategy is something that guides our everyday operations, strategic, tactical, operative, all of them. And, and the, there will be like three levels of SDG work. First, first is the systemic uh, kind of linear. Uh, as an engineer, of course, one would love that, but it's, it's a bit boring, but important. So you, you integrate the SDGs into all of the processes, procurement, strategy, budgeting, uh, project uh, system, uh, you name it, uh, web, in internet. And, and of course, you get a lot of data. So data analysts lo love that part. But then the perhaps at this, I think more exciting part is the organizational learning. So the capacity building. So how do we actually uh, enhance SDG skills within our uh, schools as Erka was, was mentioning his first talk in the first talk and, and into our uh, hospitals, into our uh, kindergartens, elderly homes, etc. So this is of, of great importance. And then the perhaps most important is why we do that. And that's the, that's the, uh, that's the thing that, that is the most exciting and that's the global role of, of ESPO. And I think the global role of Finland, if, if one would ask for me, is to, to, to create new innovations, uh, ecological innovations, um, economically feasible ones, that, that we truly uh, create new products, new ideas, not new processes that then can be scaled elsewhere. Uh, one, one last slide, uh, I'm actually Viola, you need to tell me how, how the time is, is but, but uh, just uh, we have this new analysis process that we are developing with the big, six largest cities. And the idea is, is to, to look into uh, uh, how does one integrate the SDGs into the, um, each, each person's work or unit or department or branch. So, so it's, uh, Bill, can you show me one more time? How many minutes? With your... uh, uh, well, a few minutes left. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, maybe one. <laughs> maybe one. Oh, oh, excellent. So it's it's just, just to give a, a, an example, perhaps uh, a, a teaser, if you will, uh, of what what we are doing in order to make sense. Uh, what's how to translate the SDGs into the everyday work and everyday life of, of our organization and partners. Uh, I, I'd, I'd be really happy to share more for those interested, but perhaps to respect the time, I'll, I'll stop here and, and we can go to the most exciting part, which is the discussion. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Ville. And, and thank you uh, for all the questions we have here on chat. Uh, Sue, Sue Riddleton, uh, could you please uh, unmute your mic and, and ask your questions? I saw you had a few few there on chat. I did. Thank you. Um, well, I had two questions. One was um, for Erka about the um, education system. It was very radical and really important and good. And I just wondered if you faced any pushback uh, from any of the schools or teachers on that as to, oh, this is you know, to, um, no, we don't support this. I can imagine that in the UK, perhaps. And secondly, um, to the minister about, uh, and the whole team really, about um, have other governments expressed an interest in using the Finnish model? Uh, because I'll definitely be sharing it with our government <laughs> to encourage them. Okay, Sean. Shall I answer? Okay. Yes, please. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so you are, you are right. Uh, Ecosocial education and, and transformative learning are truly radical approaches, and they create tension in in education system and also at the school level. Um, it seems that at the same time, society and politics expect education to to improve things like national competitiveness and growth and ecosocial education tells you to do just the opposite so it's 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 not an easy easy uh, situation for for teachers as as um, uh, the national core curriculum is is a um, um, regulation which should be followed 
uh, but it also is, is a kind of mandate for, for schools to be progressive. Uh, I think it's, it's learning that changes the goals, culture and ways of living in our society. And, and without this tension and, and school challenging the existing norms of society, there wouldn't be any, any transformation on society level. Uh, I would say that it hasn't been easy to make ecosocial education as a basis for teaching and school culture. One reason is, is the fact that we don't have a very concrete materials and examples for, for teachers on, and schools on, on how to do that. And the variation between schools is also wide. Some schools in Finland are very progressive, but, but I think the mainstream changes quite slowly. And I, I lifted up the field of liberal adult education as an example of, of more progressive and flexible field of education. And, and there we have, have great experiments in transformative learning already existing. Hey, may I qu quickly comment on that? Because it's a hugely important uh, topic. And I, I think Erka gave us a, a really good, good, like a big picture. And, and just a comment from a city perspective because we're, we're just launching actually we're doing we are doing the scripts this very uh, afternoon for for uh, four different videos that can be used as a study material in the upper secondary school uh, we are launching a city level sdg course and and what we've learned from our education and culture sector is that you know uh, of course the systemic change comes through uh, by integrating the SDGs into the curriculum, that then it's there. It's 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 like in the everyday practice. The material has to be such that it serves the teacher. So so in in Finland, I think a teacher has a lot of room to maneuver, and that's one of our key strengths. Erka, please comment, uh, or if if you think, uh, or, or if if you feel like uh, that. that to add something, but but at least in Espo, so we have to create SDG material, you know, that that's context driven and works for mathem mathematics teacher, for works for geography teacher, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that's that's kind of like a local level challenge, or an, an opportunity at the same time. Thank you. Yes, if, if I can give a short, very short comment, I think. Yes, it's very, very short, please. Municipality and and school management supports. Uh, this kind of, of learning and, and in addition to material, I think it's also very important to provide teachers in service training in, in the basic knowledge of sustainable development and also pedagogical skills in, in sustainability education. Yes, thank you. And then would you, Lena Kaisa-Piekkari, would like to uh, shortly uh, comment on the questions about if, if there's any other governments uh, showing interest yeah yeah happy to um every now and then we we do do get some contacts uh but i would say that mostly i hear it from from the field from cities and from the business sector uh that uh, when they are in different international uh places telling about these green deals that they get a lot of um, feedback on it and and the companies and and cities are very interested all around the world about uh, how we are doing this cooperation in very uh, very closely together but but also also from from government side every now and then but more more from from business sector Yeah. Would you also, Maria Innan, yeah, from Prime Minister's yeah. office, comment? Yeah, I would would like to ask to Sue also that uh, yes, this uh, this model we have developed this model seven years now, maybe, but uh, really this model has inspired many many countries. For example, France, Estonia, and, and uh, Canada. I have heard and and some others. This this has been worked very well in Finland, and I, I uh, also wrote there in, in the chat that if you go our pl platform, it is all made in open code. So if you want this kind of model for yourself, for your for for your country, or for some program or organization or what, you can you can get the code, and you can you can build this kind of system. Uh, where you can get concrete action towards 
common goals. And, and where there is also a reporting mechanism in, in, uh, built inside in the, in the system, and uh, you can you can join others' commitments. You can copy others' doings, concrete actions, what other do. You can copy them to your own commitment, and and also you can choose indicators. Uh, uh, for example, if you want to cut down food waste, there is a coded already ready-made indicators for food waste. For food waste, for example, etc. This is a actual system to to uh, to show your sustainability work if you if you want this system for company the school for ministry uh, the the city and as Ville said there's uh, over 140 commitments coming from Espoo city city of Espoo kindergartens libraries uh, companies whatever so uh, you can use this this uh, model uh, like you want, and this is uh, for you, for for everyone. That's why we want to to present this. Thank you so much for your leadership on this. It's really <laughs> brilliant. We'll definitely be advocating for this within the Catalyst Twenty Thirty group. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, we still had a few questions from Pram, but uh, as we are running out of time. Um, well, Pram, could you please be really <laughs> uh, quick <laughs> with your questions so we could uh, be happy to hear them? Yeah, uh, well, I have so many questions, so I'm not sure even which one to ask now at this point. Um, but I guess the, the one thing that I've been really trying to get behind is what what is it in, in Finnish society that has brought about this, this widespread commitment on the part of the citizenry? I mean, you know, I can't imagine something like this in the U.S. I just, I, I'm trying to figure out how, um, yeah, how you get this buy-in. It's, it's sort of blowing my mind. Thank you. Maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe I can answer a bit. Uh, as I said, we have really created this common understanding and, and trust in our society almost 30 years in, in these um, sustainable development issues. So we are in, in the same board, uh, different kind of uh, uh, um, stakeholders in the same, same um, board. And we, uh, uh, we can, uh, we have developed this dialogue and the trust is the key. And, uh, and this is one, one of uh, our key um, diamonds uh, of, of the trust if in this uh, sustainable development um, field. But maybe, Ville, you have something in your mind. I can see it. I, I, I wish, I wish. No, it's, 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 it's so um, difficult to uh, make explicit these intrinsic things that, that, that uh, drive the culture in our, our society. I have to say that uh, must be something to do with the low hierarchy so kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, that could be also like history driven uh, having said that for instance um you know as to as being the the editor-in-chief in our uh, vlr process i was first a bit just a bit shy and perhaps intimidated is a, is a strong word but a bit shy to connect maria for instance as she's the deputy uh, director for for that uh uh, the, whole, the whole prime minister's office sustainable development uh, but you know i had to because the mayor was pushing <laughs> was breathing down my uh, neck and i did and and so and suddenly everything started to go really smoothly because, because maria's team was like let's do this together we want cities to come uh, aboard and you know uh, show showcase their their sustainable development it's not only about finland, uh, finland. all finland is not only about government it's about cities as well uh, so, so I mean, I, I re honestly don't have an answer uh, to you. I, I suppose you just need to come here and, and <laughs> do more research, preferably during the summertime, if, if you ask us. No, that, and yeah. one, one comment I think, which is also important, is that we are a relatively small country. And uh, most of the people that I'm working with, we, we really know the people 
there's always the same people pretty much doing <laughs> wherever you go you see you see the same same faces so it's also kind of uh, already you know a bit bit better the people and it makes it easier easier to do do the collaboration yeah. and i would also say that the low hierarchy and and kind of the the way that we think that we need to do things together and and also i see it's 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 very important that like we talk really openly also of the challenges from a side or another which which actually brings us the solutions exactly and openness is 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 other word i would like to to use if you go to see our voluntary national review last year we did many innovations also there but one most important was that we integrated the civil society's voice completely there we the civil society assessed uh, the progress in in finland uh, uh, with the sdgs so we integrated civil society's shadow reports into our official national report so there's uh, assessment from government and ministries but also uh, assessment from the civil society there was over 57 NGOs who assessed how Finland and government has, do, has been doing with the SDGs. So, and I, I come to the word trust again. <laughs> but but thank, thank you so much that you joined. And one one comment, if you go to, to our web pages, I, I put the link there, you can see also that there is a citizen's lifestyle test and commitment so we we every every one of us we can test our ceo to emissions and then the machine uh, uh suggest us uh actions we can we could do in uh, to cut down our ceo emissions just uh, go there and check that and that is also you can use and take this to your own countries it's uh um you can you can modify it but this is thank you viola and it, it, for you yeah thank you uh, for everyone for joining us and thank you all for the interesting presentations also and yeah you can you can find the website here in english on the chat box but uh, if nothing else uh, then uh, thank you all and have a great week thank you, thank you all so much bye -bye. it was really wonderful thank, thank, thank you. you bye bye for this wonderful session thank have a so great day everyone folks. thank you Excellent Bye -bye. session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really, really nice. Thank you. And we'll be in touch Bye -bye. for follow up, right? <laughs> and collaboration to making it happen globally. Okay, thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.